Methylation. Have you learned anything about methylation and how it can affect our hormones? That's what we're going to talk about today. It's a very important step in our detox pathway, and if we don't have that optimized, our hormones won't be optimized. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video out if you or someone you know wants to get off that hormone roller coaster. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, and I'm a functional medicine doctor, a family doctor, and a registered dietitian, and I help people get off the hormone roller coaster. So that's what we're talking about today, but we're talking about detoxification and how important that is in helping us get off the hormone roller coaster. One very important step in detoxification is methylation, and that means adding a methyl group to something. So if we're not methylating properly, we can have damage to our ability to get rid of toxins, our ability to process our extra hormones, like that estrogen dominance I talk about a lot, and I'll link a video about that above. But getting, we need to get rid of excess hormones, and methylation is one of the ways we can do that. It also, methylation helps us burn our fat appropriately and turn our genes on and off, so it's very important. So how do we know if we're not methylating properly? Well, one thing you can do is you can actually test your, for one more popular kind of well-known um, way to look for methylation problems is to check your MTHFR gene. And you can do that in the US via LabCorp request through your provider and that can tell you if you have at least uh, defects in the folate, folate part of methylation. Another way is to look at your um, MMA levels, methyl malonic acid, and that would show us if we maybe have defects in our MTR or MTRR or our B12 processing, meaning you might need more methylated B12, which is a certain type of B12. You can also look at homocysteine in your blood work, and that will tell us if you um, are building up homocysteine and if it's not going down the right pathway. If that builds up, that can cause all those prob problems above as well as lead to heart disease. So that's another good reason to check out your methylation to avoid problems like heart disease. Ideally, you want your homocysteine to be around um, seven to eight around six, seven, maybe even up to eight, but getting above that means you might not be methylating properly. You can check B12 and folate also in regular labs. I also like to use tests like Nutrival where you can look at your methylation pathways. That's made by a company called Genova, and I'll put a link down below. Um, I use the Dutch test that can look at methylation, and that's a great way to look at your hormones, and I talk about that a lot. It's a great way to look at how your hormones are being processed and how healthy hormone levels you have, whether you have estrogen dominance, progesterone deficiency, testosterone deficiency, and also methylation problems because it does look at that too. Um, and then a lot of the functional medicine lab companies do also make a test called the methylation panel. So you can look at that as well. So what way, how can we support our methylation if we do have problems with methylation? Well, we might want to consider not taking supplements or foods that have folic acid, the more synthetic form of folate in them, and instead choose supplements that have fo actual folate in them or choose foods that are folate rich, like green leafy vegetables, avocado, um, beans, and then we can also choose other foods that support all of our detox pathways like celery, carrots, parsley, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, probiotic rich foods like our fermented foods, pomegranates, berries, watercress is great for detoxification, green tea is great for detoxification, artichoke is great for detoxification detoxification. Getting a high fiber diet is really good for detoxification. So really considering all of those foods and getting them into your diet on a regular basis will help our detox pathways and then help our um, methylation as well. Another thing we can do, especially if we do those tests and we find out we're deficient in certain methylated vitamins, is like I said, we can take a, a, com a B complex that maybe has methyl um, folate in it and methyl B12 in it. You also want to avoid synthetic B12 if you have methylation problems. So that would be avoiding multivitamins or energy drinks or protein drinks or whatever that have cyanocobalamin in them, cyano B12 basically, and choose instead of, instead of that hydroxy or methyl B12. When you do take B vitamins, you want to go slowly. If you find that you're deficient or you have methylation problems, take a small amount first. Don't overdo it. There are a lot of supplement companies that make way too high of doses of 
B vitamin. So you do want to be careful. I'll put some ideas down below in the link down below of, of products that I like and I use. So you do want to tread lightly. If you want to check out your, your methylation pathways, another way to do that is looking at your genes through 23andMe. That looks at your whole panel. In my practice, I take that information and run it through another database where it becomes more interpretable information that a provider that works with genes can give you because 23andMe doesn't give you that full report. But you can run your 23andMe results through other programs. There's also um, one called Nutrition Genome that I use a lot, and I'll link that down below. Um, that really helps to interpret your genes, and it's an actual, an actual gene test and a report. So it's not 23andMe, it's you, you run that gene test, and it gives you all kinds of information about the right foods to eat for your genes, and helps with weight loss and methylation as well. So if you're wondering how you can optimize your hormone function, think about methylation and your detox pathways and get some more of those foods listed into your diet and maybe test your levels. So remember that if you want to get off the ro hormone roller coaster, I'm posting videos every Friday. Help this channel stay active by sharing, liking, subscribing, and talking to others about it. I also have a Mighty Network hormone support group that I will link down below. Lots of benefits, monthly live Zoom sessions with me, my access to my Emerge Hormone Balance course, and lots of support there for women. Usually women it helps women between their mid to late 30s to early 50s with hormone balance. Let me know if there's any questions on methylation down below and join me next Friday.